As a lot of you know, Roblox is a platform game where developers can make games and earn money from it. A really, really small amount. You can buy accessories from the catalog, dress up your characters, and play with your friends. Just have a good old time. And sometimes there are actually traditional events that Roblox themselves host. One specifically being the egg hunt. In these egg hunts, you would play different games made by different Roblox creators. You would complete an objective relating to the egg hunt inside of the game, get a badge, as well as an egg accessory that goes on top of your head. I never really wore these eggs when I got them. They look pretty cool actually, but I mainly got them just for collection purposes. They introduced these egg hunts in April of 2008, which funnily enough was the exact same month and the exact same year where I was born, which is actually pretty cool. But unfortunately, these egg hunts have been discontinued since April of 2020. And now they introduced a new egg hunt, which is just called The Hunt. They made a bunch of promotional videos trying to hype it up and their Twitter. It uh, was actually pretty cool. The Hunt which they call it, they just call it the hunt first edition, is an event similar to the egg hunt where they would post every uh, year when it got close to Easter. So it's really similar to the egg hunt, but a lot more corporate. So when you enter the game, there's a main hub and it reveals a bunch of portals surrounding the middle of the area. These portals are actually games that you can choose from and get badges from, but there are over a hundred different games to choose from, which is a lot. I wasn't like too worried about it because you know, that's, that's just more content. I wouldn't mind it if there wasn't a super small time limit, which is 14 days, which sounds like a lot of time, but keep in mind, people have school, jobs, hobbies that take away a lot of time to playing in the event. So this really increases FOMO, the fear of missing out. So players try to beat all the games as soon as possible and it increases playtime as much as possible. I really feel like 14 days is really small considering the amount of games that you have to play to get all of these rewards. And speaking of rewards, clicking on the Hunt First Edition button that's like to the left of your screen will bring up a Fortnite Battle Pass like system. During the other traditional scavenger hunt events, you would really complete an objective inside of a different game and immediately get an accessory, usually egg hats. This event, however, you have to beat multiple games just to get a single free item. And by paying an extra 800 Robux, you get the gold track that has the same idea of the items, but just recolored and slightly remodeled. Now you could also get the gold track for free by owning the Core Blocks Deathwalker bundle, which you could buy in the catalog, for a super small amount of 29,000 Robux. Or in other words, $101 is $101. Currently, there are only five free items that you can get by completing a certain amount of games quests, and an additional five items that you can get by buying the gold track. Now, the amount of games that you actually have to beat to get all these items is incredibly absurd, especially for the little amount of time that you have. To get every single item, you need to beat at least 95 games. That's five games less than the total amount that's inside of the hunt. The accessories themselves actually look pretty good in my opinion. I think they look cool, although I don't see myself really wearing any of them other than the staff. I might wear the staff here and there, but other than that, no. Looking at the right side, there are limited Roblox items, uh, which are available for 24 hours. The accessories go for decent-ish prices. Since they're limited, it makes sense why they're pretty high priced, but some of them are extremely high and absurd. There was a, a sword back bling that went for, what, I think 36,000 Robux. That's a lot for just a retextured sword back bling. Uh, the color scheme for every one of these accessories other than the gold track accessories, obviously, are blue, which makes sense because the whole event is revolved around a blue color scheme, which I like. It also revolves around the Core Blocks Deathwalker as well as uh, time travel. And the lobby itself is also really well made. I really like that. I couldn't stop like trying to like look around for secrets because there are some secrets in there. The whole lobby is so well made. I really liked it, which uh, 
can't be said for most of the games. This is the biggest issue I had with the event, which is really bad because the games are the main focus of the event. And uh, before I talk about how most of these games are bad, I want to focus on the games that did an incredible job with the event. Please donate. A game about donating branches off into something completely new, while still maintaining the core mechanic of donating. You start by talking to a struggling musician, and you have to do a couple of really interesting objectives to collect diamonds and eventually give to the musician, eventually giving you the badge. SCP Roleplay, I really like this one. This is a game about roleplaying with SCPs, obviously. It has you go to a whole different area while still maintaining the core idea, that being SCPs, of course. You have to go through a portal, fending off monsters, and retrieving an egg inside of a house. I actually really enjoyed playing this. Tower Defense Simulator, it's a game like any other tower defense game. It has you play a whole different map with whole different enemies. This was incredibly well made. The effects were amazing. The map was amazing. Though it was really easy so anyone can beat it. Catalog Avatar Creator. This game is about creating your dream avatar for free, but what they did for the event was actually completely different. They made a classic Roblox team deathmatch battle with the classic medieval teams. Although the task of being on the winning team to get the badge, I wasn't a huge fan of. Doors. This is a game about randomly generated rooms where you open doors. <clears throat> I'm a furry too. Woof woof. Oh my god. Bro. This did the best job with the event, in my opinion, of course. I really feel like this game did the best job. They made an entire new game mode, but still maintaining the core mechanics. They had you go through 50 doors, which was actually pretty quick, and I really liked it. It wasn't 100 doors, it didn't take you like a couple hours to do. It was only 50 doors that you had to go through. I also had a timer that counted down, which was new, and you can only increase the time by finding a lever that can do so. The game mode also features a new map and a couple of monsters. Easily the best game that did the hunt. Death Ball, a game about deflecting a ball, inspired by either the Roblox game Deflect or TF2's Pyro Dodgeball. It had you defeat the Core Blocks Deathwalker boss, which was one of the themes inside of the Hunt First Edition, while still maintaining core mechanics of deflecting the ball back at the boss. The Core Blocks was also a main focus of the Hunt itself. This also did an incredible job. I had such a good time with it. It was also really challenging, but it was still super, super fun. Arsenal, a high-paced, PvP FPS game also did one of the best jobs with the event. They had you go on a whole Mission Impossible-esque mission to get the badge. You had to infiltrate through an office building, kill a bunch of NPCs, escape from a helicopter, which is shooting at you through windows, which was actually, I actually really thought that was super cool, and ultimately destroying the helicopter. The whole mission had voice lines too, which I really liked, and it was just overall, it was really well made. One of my favorites. Shindo Life, a Naruto-based game, had you collect eggs while evading a giant bunny with an incredibly smooth cutscene and voice line. This was my favorite cutscene in all of the hunt games that were chosen. I've come to collect my nine missing eggs. I want egg. No egg for you. The egg mine now. You will pay the price for stealing what belongs to me! The Mimic, a horror game that had you run around to collect eggs while evading a monster bunny. It made it a tiny bit tedious with the amount of eggs you had to collect, but also a bit of fun because of the chance of you getting caught. It just gave you a bunch of adrenaline, which I, which I actually really liked. Steep Steps, this also did a really good job. A game about placing down ladders and climbing had you go to a whole different area, climb up a mountain, collect core blocks related objects, which again is one of the themes of the hunt, and had you bring it back to the altar to where a really cool cutscene will play. Piggy, a horror game kind of like Granny on the App Store that you can get. If you haven't heard of Granny, it's just um, like an escape puzzle kind of game. It had you enter another map through a unique cutscene, which I really liked, and complete a unique map. Unfortunately, when I streamed this, I couldn't experience the whole thing and the whole uh, the whole map itself because the timer was at 20 seconds and then after that I just got the badge. These were pretty much the only games that 
did a really good job on the event. There were a couple more that actually did a pretty good job, but other than that, all the other games were either super tedious, boring, or repetitive, or just downright bad. Most of the games had the same objective, just going around the map collecting crates or collecting bunnies or eggs, just going on a really repetitive and tedious scavenger hunt. Or just playing the game normally, which I think most of these games did, which isn't innovative or creative at all. Some of the games actually tried really hard putting their best effort into making a really good experience for everyone to enjoy, like steep steps and doors, while almost every other game just had you play the game normally. It made it take you a long time too and just slapped you with the badge like, oh, congratulations for getting to level three of the game and playing for 15 minutes. Here's a badge. A lot of these games did a terrible job with the event and mainly made you play the game for an insanely long amount of time, mainly for engagement. Most of the driving, role-playing tycoon games had you just go around and collect things, as I said before. And most of the simulator or tycoon games were pay to win to get the badge. Literally, you could just buy the best item in the game and then boom, you'll be done in seconds. The worst offenders for this event are combat warriors. You had to kill a bunch of people. And this is actually kind of pay to win because you can just pay to get a really good weapon. You had to kill a bunch of people, which will actually take you hours if you're not good at the game. And you also have to complete an obstacle course afterwards, which I actually kind of liked. The obstacle course was really pretty well made. Creatures of Scenaria. This is the worst one. It was in the live stream when I was playing it. I was just so disappointed because I thought it was actually going to be decent. But it just had you play the game normally and it had you fully grow a dragon to an adult, which will take you forever, as well as completing region based objectives and a couple and a couple other things. You had to like purchase something through the item shop. I was just like, oh, holy crap, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. I'll be but you're on a bike. You had to complete the first world in under 13 minutes, do a second objective, and the third objective was getting to world four. Ultimate football. This is one of the worst ones. You had to play the game for four quarters, which will take you about 30 minutes to an hour to complete, depending on how often the ball drops. Because the ball will drop and a cutscene will play for like the next like 30 seconds. And it happens a lot. It, it really depends. Pet Simulator 99, this is also one of the worst ones. You had to get to area 20, so just playing the game normally and then going to like mid game. So this will take you hours if you're just starting out with the game. And the only reason why I was able to complete it in the first place was because my friend actually gave me really good pets, which actually helped me a lot. So thank you so much for helping me with this. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have completed it by now because that would have taken me forever. Trigger Hunt Simulator, you had to dig up three different kinds of chests. The first two were easy. I think the first one was, um, no, the first one was a ruby chest. Second one was a diamond chest. And the third one was the amethyst chest, which took, which would take forever for you to dig up. So again, just play the game normally. And uh, I ended up paying Robux to eventually get it because most of the simulator and tycoon games are just pay to win. In Fruit Battlegrounds, you had to get to level 15, get 500 bounty, and get a two kill streak. That's crazy. And the thing is, with a lot of these games, there is no direction whatsoever. I had to actually look up what I had to do because there was no direction whatsoever. I'm not going to go over every game, but those are easily the worst defenders. A lot of, all the other ones are just tedious and boring. It's just the same thing. I streamed myself trying to get all 100 games done and uh, I stream every uh, eon. So please make sure to join up if you're interested. I only got to 95, which is the bare minimum to get every single item. And I couldn't get the last five because it, it the games have gotten so bad. If you watch the stream, you could see how my brain started to slowly rot and me just becoming more frustrated with the event. I was about to, I was, I was going to let my demons, I was going to let the demons come inside of me. I ended up talking to my friends about it too. And they also agreed that a lot of the games did the bare minimum with the event as well. I also interviewed someone that completed a hefty amount of games and I talked to him about what he thought about the event and he actually gave me some really valuable insight. What do you think about this event so far? Like your honest opinion about it. Um, I think the items are cool, but I think it's too much quantity over quality. What about the games in general? Um, some are good, some items aren't really worth it. I just think it's fun to do. Incorporate the embed to make the game interesting when you play yeah. it. And I agree with some both of you. Are just obvious like cash grabs. I've experienced a lot of them that are like that are like that. But some of the games did really good, like Doors did a really good job. 
but most of the games are pretty much cash grabs. Yeah. What was that? Pet Simulator 99? That was a terrible cash grab. Yeah. You had to get to like that area one what, 20. Drove me crazy. I think there's definitely some like really good ones. So like I think probably my favorites so far have to be like um, Arsenal. Oh. Death Ball was cool. Death Ball did a really good job. RB Battle mini games. That one was pretty good. SCP Roleplay was really uh, yeah, good. That one. That really? One was, that one's very buggy. Uh, yeah. If you go the route where you have to kill the rats. Uh, Yo, it can bug out go, completely. Go, go. I feel like Arsenal. Was I feel like the, the effort is there. Nine, I feel like the team is there. It, nine, just, it doesn't eight, feel six. great. Yeah, it's definitely really corny. Uh, because you know, I had to go to the the route where it's the rhythm game with the rap battle, and that I did. I don't know. It, I feel like the one that did it well was uh, Roblox High School. I think that's the one that had the rhythm game. Oh yeah, they did a really good job with that one. With the whole rhythm oh, game. Yeah, that was it. really I that was actually really it. I thought I was joining a stupid no, game like a <laughs> but it ended up being one of the most like cool experiences that I don't know I've had on this game so far. Like I've been playing on this platform for over a decade now, and I think that is probably one of the coolest uh event based things I've ever participated in. The thing is what I have trouble understanding is that some games did a really good job and they put in a bunch of effort but some games did the bare minimum of like you have to just wait 15 minutes but doors they had a whole different mini game like they had a whole different game mode for it uh death ball had a whole boss battle like I i'm a little like that stuff kind of confuses me because some games did such a good job like scp roleplay had you go to a, a whole different area while other games just made you just play the game normally or just wait for 15 minutes and then Get the badge. The theming is something that I want to see more from the like the hunt or like yeah you know second edition and whatnot. Yeah. Um. I I, I want to see games be very conscious of what they're going towards and what they're yeah. trying to have people do in their games and kind of push a narrative, a sort of like yeah. storyline. Um. Like like the theming right now a lot of it is about like time travel right yeah like which i like but a lot of the games like 95 percent of the games are not incorporating that like the colors are there like look the, the, like the theming around the colors like that's that's awesome yeah i can't wait to see more themes followed through in a in a more correct fashion than, exactly you know they they did a really i i really like this theme with like the whole blue theme and it goes along with the core blocks as well and some other games incorporate the core blocks and the colors really nicely like tds and death ball but most of the games didn't include core blocks which is fine but they did include uh time travel which is what this theme is about as well it's mainly about like what the the color scheme of blue uh, core blocks death walker and time travel but yeah like you said most of these games don't even incorporate that like it's just you playing the main just the main game which confuses me a little bit as well because i wonder like what the email was like if they like told them what the theme was about like imagine being the creator of like i don't know muscle legends and you get an email from roblox and says, yeah can you make it so like you know, the event's gonna be based around time travel and core blocks and the color blue. And then they just like make a quest where you just have to like get 500 speed and then you get the you get the badge. I might have a potential answer for that. Some creators might not have the skills to pull off something like that. Like there's yeah. a lot of creators that have just made basic games and they've just become really popular. I don't think some of them, some of those creators can incorporate that type of thing that Roblox wants from them. Uh, if they were to do that. So I like, yeah. like I said, man, quantity over quality this time, but I feel like this is just going to show us who the good game studios and good teams are. As I was editing this video, Roblox actually just released a new item that is only obtainable if you beat every single game, all 100 games. So you have to beat all 100 games to get this last item and it's an egg. But this gives me another complaint. A lot of the games aren't available for everyone, depending if, well, if you're banned from a game or if the game's banned from your country or if you're not old enough to play the game. So I looked around, 28 of the games in the hunt are rated 9 plus and 13 plus, making it so a lot of people on Roblox, especially since Roblox is catered towards a younger audience, it doesn't let them get the last item in the battle pass 
and the newly released Infinite Egg. When I was looking at the event homepage inside of the FAQ, they stated that you don't have to complete all of the quests to get every item, but you actually have to do so to get the egg. You actually have to complete all of the quests to get the egg, to get that last item. <laughs> which is a little weird. Uh, if they were to ever do this in the future, they should really make it so they either pick games that are available for everyone or give players that can't get access to the game a freebie. Taking everything into account, taking the whole event into the account, I was a little disappointed. But I would have taken that much rather than, than most of the other sponsored events that Roblox has done not including Ready Player One, and just no event at all. But it would be cool if there are more items than just five, but I'm still really grateful and happy that I got any of the items in the first place. The games are really the biggest problem. Almost all of them are really stale, boring, repetitive, and are just cash grabs. To fix that, just pick games that aren't pay to win and uh, are fun. A little disappointed with the event. Uh, I hope the next one they do, or the second edition, is a lot better. I, I, hope, I hope they do better in the next one. That's pretty much it. Peace.